being a provincial, apart from visiting the brothers in Ghana, what else do you do as a provincial? Well, we are uh, a group that has several traditional ministries. So, for example, the primary sponsored ministries that we have, we have six secondary schools. We have a, a small college. We have the associates of uh, Holy Cross Associates of the Midwest Province. And so I work with each one of those ministries to try to continue the tradition of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Uh, we like to preserve what we would call the charism, the values, and the traditions of Blessed Basil Moreau, our founder, and the Congregation of Holy Cross. And, we, and the people that we work with are very interested in maintaining that tradition. Okay. Even though there are fewer brothers in the United States, they are not willing to let go of who they are. Okay. Their identity is very connected to the Congregation of Holy Cross and all that we have done. So we have been very involved in being intentional about the language that we use, about how we describe ourselves, about how we support each other in, our, in different ministries to preserve that charism, values, and tradition that we, that we have lived okay. for all these years. Okay. You refer to your congregation as the Midwest Brothers of Holy Cross. Why Midwest Brothers? Okay. The Congregation of Holy Cross has both priests and brothers. Okay. Uh, originally, the Brothers of St. Joseph were okay. founded in 1820 by Father James Dujarier. Okay. Uh, later in the 1830s, Father Basil Moreau merged the Brothers of St. Joseph with a group of auxiliary priests. Okay and we formed the Congregation of Holy Cross, both priests and brothers. Okay. And it was Moreau's vision that we be equals. Okay. That the brothers would always have an equal status, so when we had our international meetings, that there were an equal number of brothers and an equal number of oh, priests, priests. Okay. that were always present. Okay. So, for many years, the brothers and the priests lived and ministered together. After the Second World War, there was such an expansion of ministry and the, an expansion of the vocation of the brother that we really discovered that we probably would grow more and function more effectively if we separated from the priest because the brothers were primarily into secondary education and some elementary. We, we also uh, managed some homes for delinquents and dependent neglect children. Mm -hmm. and. We were pursuing higher education, we were becoming very professional in all that we did, and so the brothers and the priests separated, uh, each one pursuing their traditional ministries. So the Midwest province, it was originally one big province in the United States, yeah. and that was centered at Notre Dame, and there was one big priest province in, in the United States. Okay. And as we grew, a group in the Southwest broke off and a group in the East broke off. Okay. So that's why we then became, instead of the United States province of brothers, we became the Midwest, Midwest province, province of brothers because of our geographical location. Okay. And it was the Midwest province that first came to Africa in 1957, I think. Okay. 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 All right. Viewers, if you just join us, you are live on Sectari Kali TV, and you're having a conversation with Brother Kenneth Hades, the provincial of Midwest brothers of the Holy Cross. Brother Kenneth, I can see you are not wearing your habits. You are in a traditional African print. Well, there's two reasons for that. The most important one for me is I'm not used to this weather. Okay. So I find these to be not only beautiful, but also very comfortable. But also, uh, most of the brothers uh, stopped wearing their habit in the United States back in the late 60s, early 70s that tradition maintained itself here in Ghana. And when I come, I have a white habit that I can wear. Okay. Uh, and uh, there are pictures of me, uh, but I usually only use it while I'm here. Okay. Most of the brothers back in the States, uh, at least the older ones that okay. let go of that uh, back after Vatican II have not returned to it. Though I must admit that our younger men, both the priests and the brothers, have returned to the use of the habit okay. very faithfully. Okay. Could you describe for us the habits of the Midwest Brothers of the Holy Cross? Uh, now, first of all, okay. I, I'm going to make a small correction. Okay. It's the Midwest Brothers of Holy Cross. Of Holy we Cross. actually are named after a place, okay, not after the cross. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, we were founded in a place called Saint Croix or Holy Cross in France. Okay. And the habit of the Midwest Brothers is it was basically a plain black cast yeah. uh, with uh, external buttons on the top and buttons that didn't show on the bottom. And then there's a cord that goes around the waist and is tied, uh, has a tassel at the bottom, and it's a very simple cord. Um, and then uh, a medal of St. Joseph that was around the neck and then tucked into one of the folds. Okay. More recently, we've been using this symbol of with the cross and anchors, we call it spes unica, or one hope, or only hope. Okay. And it refers to the motto of the Congregation of Holy Cross, because we believe that Jesus has saved us, and that we are, we are given that gift, and that is our great gift. So we have anchors yeah. on the cross. Yeah. So our connection to the cross uh, allows us to be a participant in that salvific act of okay. Jesus, that gift that he gave us. Okay. All right. Now you are in Ghana. Last year you were in Ghana. What is the role of the Holy Cross Brothers in Ghana? The role of the Holy Cross Brothers in Ghana is uh, primarily education. Oh, okay. Uh, though we have uh, other individuals uh, who have uh, excelled in their particular field and have been asked to move uh, into other areas of specialization. But most of us are teachers. Most of the brothers here teach. have uh, been historically connected to St. Augustine's College and uh, St. John's Secondary School. Uh, we also have a new school that we just opened up in Kasawa, yeah. St. Brother Andre Senior High School. Uh, we've also had uh, some brothers uh, that are involved in technical education. So we have Holy Cross uh, technical Institute uh, in Second E. Yeah. Okay. If someone wants to be a member of the Holy Cross Brothers, what should the person do? Contact one of the brothers. Okay. Uh, we've got website connections, but also uh, just contact any one of the brothers and he can put you in touch with our uh, vocation director, Brother Aristide. There's a, a good process. We have opportunities for people to come and see. Okay. And we actually call it a come and see weekend. Okay. And uh, young men are invited to come and experience what it might mean to be a, a Holy Cross brother. Okay. Then there is our stages of formation. Initial stage to kind of try it out. We call it an aspirancy. And then we get into a pre-novitiate program. And then a novitiate program and a scholastic program. Okay. And as people move through those stages, they pursue an education to prepare themselves for ministry, uh, get involved in some ministry. And if we all agree, the candidate as well as the brothers, that this is a good fit and that this is going to work, uh, eventually final profession. No, oh, okay. okay. So when it comes to preparing for ministry, as well in the area of uh, academic excellence, do I have a say as, as a brother in what I become in the future for the congregation? Yes. Uh, our tradition as brothers is very horizontal. We, okay. we actually have a very wonderful relationship with each other. And um, as a religious superior, uh, I am responsible to see the greater picture. Okay. And that is also true of uh, Brother John here in Ghana. Okay. So we are aware of things that perhaps every brother is not aware of. Okay. And so we try to see the total picture. We also look at the needs of the church. Uh, bishops will contact us and say, could you help with this? Could you be a part of that? And we try to match that with the individual talents and interests of the brothers. Okay. So we try to put a person who could teach in a particular area in that area. Uh, we try to put him in a location where he will be nurtured and in mentored and to become a better and better teacher. So we try to match the interest and, and the education and the background of the individual brothers and put that with the needs of the church and particularly the needs of the schools where we have a long-standing relationship. Oh, okay. Brother, okay. Well, briefly tell us about your background and how you ended up becoming a Holy Cross brother. Well, I was very lucky to attend a school that was run by the Holy Cross Brothers. I went to uh, a boys' school, St. Edward High School in Lakewood, Ohio. And when I was there, we had 1,750 boys, day school. Yeah. And uh, 
I looked at the brothers who were working there, I looked at the brothers who were teaching me, and I said, I want to try that. Oh, okay. Just like that. I, and, it was, and then I talked to some of the brothers about that, and they encouraged me. Uh, my parents encouraged me. Uh, they were very careful not to uh, celebrate until I knew that it yeah. was what I wanted to yeah. do, because they didn't want to put uh, inappropriate pressure. But it was seeing the brothers in action that motivated me to join the brothers. So uh, I joined the brothers and went through those stages of formation that I described to you earlier. Yeah. Um, I was very blessed uh, to be one of the brothers that was asked to study at the University of Notre Dame. I was able later on to pursue an advanced degree in administration from Notre Dame and another okay. degree in social work from uh, a prominent university, Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. So. I gained a lot of experience and eventually became a school administrator. Wow. Uh, it was uh, an unusual path to yeah, that because yeah. I, I thought I would be uh, a teacher and I thought I would be doing all kinds of uh, co-curriculars like the, the people who were most influential for me, but I found I had an interest in some degree of talent for administration. So I was uh, an administrator in two of our schools for more than 30 years. Um, and then the provincial at that time asked me to come to Notre Dame and help him. Yeah. And then when he left office, I was elected to take his place. Oh, okay. So uh, the provincials are chosen by election okay. of the members of the province. So both of the men here in Ghana and our men in back in the United States. And we also have some men in other mission areas uh, primarily right now South America, but we've had many men that, that uh, contributed to the uh, building up of the church in Bangladesh oh, okay. uh, from our province. Oh, okay. So everybody votes, and uh, after uh, losing for a few times, <laughs> uh, I, I, I used to say that I knew how much God loved me because I wasn't elected, but I knew how much the brothers admired me or at least thought well of me because they at least nominated yeah. me. But then it became my turn, and I think it was divine providence because I think I was ready this time. This time, okay. And so I think that's why I got elected because I think I was ready to do it. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a challenge. Uh, it's very exciting to visit Ghana because you have all these younger men uh, who are uh, advancing uh, the brothers' vocation here in this beautiful country. And it's also a challenge because there's a lot of administrative duties. There are personal duties. Uh, one of the things that's difficult for us back in the United States is many of our men are elderly. Oh, okay. And okay. so we're providing the, and arranging for the right kind of care. Yeah. Um, we're very blessed here. One of our, our uh, American brothers is here, and he had a stroke just a, a little while ago. Wow. And he's now, uh, at this time at least, bedridden. And the local brothers have just said, we will take care of you, brother. You are our brother. Oh, okay. You are our family. Yeah, you yeah. are our elder brother. Yeah. Uh, you are an elder. We will care for you. And uh, he is one of those older guys that can be a little mm -hmm. cantankerous. Yeah. Uh, but our younger brothers have been extremely generous and very caring uh, in offering uh, all kinds of support, uh, both for his physical needs, but also his spiritual needs, to come over and to sit with him, to pray with him, and to visit with him. Uh, and to encourage him to uh, get better. Mm. So in total, how many of you are there in the Midwest? The in the Midwest, yeah. there are 80 in the United States, and there okay. are 54 here in Ghana. In Ghana. Oh, okay. okay. I should say 80 from the United States yeah. and 54 in Ghana. from Ghana. Okay. okay. How many days are you spending in Ghana? Uh, I am here 20 days. Oh, okay. So I am visiting each one of the brothers. Uh, my entire provincial council is joining me. They're coming over from the United States, and For we're going to have our meeting here in uh, Brafia. And uh, they are arriving on Christmas Eve, and we will be leaving uh, to get back to the United States by New Year's Eve. So this is a wonderful opportunity for our leaders back in the United States mm. to see the fantastic things that are happening here yeah. in Ghana, yeah. and for some of our men here in Ghana to meet the leaders from the United States. Okay. How many? Yes, I used to have another provincial. It is a six-year term, okay. and uh, if 
I'm healthy enough and people want me to, <laughs> I have the opportunity for a second term of three years, so there's a nine year limit. Oh, so six years for the first term. Six years for the first term, mm -hmm. and then uh, an extra three years, three years if that's, if, yeah. if I know, if I think I still have something to give, okay. and if and if the brothers still want me, then, then I might be nine years, nine we'll years. see. Okay. We'll see. Okay, Rokere, it's been wonderful having this conversation with you. Any final message to the brothers in Ghana and to the church in Ghana? And before I let you go, remember the diocese, of Sagani Tapa also celebrated uh, Golden Jubilee this year. Any message? Well, Jubilees are wonderful times to celebrate all that has gone, but it's also a time to celebrate the potential for the future. So we celebrated 50 years of the brothers a number of years ago. Yeah. Uh, we're actually a little over 70, 60 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I look to the brothers here in Ghana, I want to encourage them to continue to pursue a truly Ghanaian form of the Congregation of Holy Cross, uh, one that belongs in, in West Africa. And I, I want to encourage them to continue to work toward their status as an independent province where they will re be responsible for everything. And my work gets a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> but also f for the, the, the diocese, it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing that, to see the growth of the church in Ghana uh, in actually in all of Africa. If you look at statistics about what's happening and where the church is growing, it is growing faster yeah. and more faithfully, in, in my opinion, yeah. here in Africa than anywhere else in the world. So I just say celebrate, have another jubilee, <laughs> and look toward the future with great, great hope. Thank you very, very much. Viewers, you just had a short conversation with Brother Kenneth Hades, Provincial of the Midwest Brothers of Holy Cross. Brother Kenneth, Thank you very much, and God bless you for coming. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless the diocese. I hope you get a new bishop soon. <laughs> <laughs>